So it's part two of lesson 12. We've completed our CRUD operations, our single page CRUD operations, where we can add, edit, and delete through our Angular front end, talking to our Node Express REST API back end. But what we want to look at now is how, would, how do we deploy this? Because we have two separate applications. Our, our Notice also, our Angular front end, it's very large. So if we look at our Angular client right now, it's 369 megabytes. The vast majority of this are the all the modules that the Angular CLI uses is like 80, 90% of this. But we don't need a lot of this. We have a compression tool in Angular, a way to bundle this. So what we want to do is we want to compress and bundle our Angular app, and when we do that, I was just playing around, it actually will shrink it down. This is all, the entire Angular app is gonna come down to just this. A few JavaScript files, our CSS and our index file. So this total package, we're actually gonna shrink to less than one megabyte, about a quarter of a megabyte when we compress it. It's going to run much, much faster. It's going to be optimized. And then we can integrate it into our server application in a subfolder so that we can deploy the whole thing. And when we hit the domain, it's actually just going to load our index.html page so we can deploy this from GitHub to Heroku. We're going to go through that bundling and deployment process. The first thing we're going to need to do so we're gonna to need to do a few things in our Angular client. Number one, we have this environment file here where we set up our server URL. So our service is using this file right now. We're, we're linking to our environment file to read our server URL. But we've got a separate environment file here called environment.prod.ts. So this is inside of Angular under the environments folder, which is in the root, sorry, under source and environments. Let's open up the environment.prod.ts. So what we want to do now is we want to set up the URL for our live API server. So I'm going to go and create a new application in my Heroku panel, and then I'm going to add that domain in here. Because when this is deployed, we're not going to be using localhost 3000 as the server URL. So let's go to Heroku. And let's make a new application here. So here's my original Node Express handlebars job tracker. I'm going to make a new app. I'm going to call this a RF, actually I'll call it job tracker um, full stack. So give your application a name and click create. I'm going to connect it up to GitHub in a little bit, but not yet. So I'm going to open the application, and this is going to be the server URL we want in production. Right? This is the live domain where our API server is going to be. So I'm going to copy that. And in my production file, I'm going to set the API server variable to be our live domain. This is not good, it's not enough to just have it run on localhost. This actually has to be deployed to the web server. So here's the where we'll be able to find the root domain for our application. So again, this is in environment.prod.ts. So add an API server variable and set it equal to your new Heroku domain. We then have to make
Okay, Chris, you get an error in which file? Are, are you still talking about uh, your component, you mean, or you're getting an error with the environment file? I'm just not clear. Um, the, I got an error on my environment.prod.ts file. And when I Sorry, for some reason, your like, audio, I'm not, I see you're speaking, Chris, but I don't hear you. Oh. Sorry. Um. Oh, sorry. One second, Chris. Am I saying something again? I should be able to hear you now. Hmm. Somebody else want to chime in? See if I can hear anybody. Can you hear this? Yes, I hear you, Matt. Loud and clear. <laughs> okay, Chris, do you want to try again? I just switched my audio settings. Thank you. Or Matt, maybe you can relay Chris's what Chris had said. I wasn't able to hear him. Hmm. Um, uh, all I know is he's gotten error. That's <laughs> I didn't really follow the specifics. Okay, Chris, sorry, do you want to try again? Sure. I got an error, a single error, and I typed exactly what you typed. Okay, and this is the error you were referring to earlier, or is this another error? I'm not clear. Full stack. You mentioned you had an error in the component. Or is that what we're talking about, or is this another error? No, it had the red line on the API server. It also has the red lines on the delete employer, update employer, add employer. Inside your component you're talking about in this file? Yeah, it has to, I think it has to do with a missing plugin. Okay, it has to do with a missing plugin. Okay, you know, so you know what, Chris, just follow along the best you can. I realize things won't completely work. You and I can look at it when, we, when we're done, okay? And I'll okay. Bug it. Thank you. So make sure in our production environment, we've got our API server pointing to our, our new Heroku website. And then we're going to go and modify our service. So right now, our employer service, it's using our development environment file, where our domain is localhost 3000. And notice it says ng build, which we're going to use, it replaces environment with environment.prod. Um, So we'll see if this works. I think that's all we have to do with the environment file. We may, so it, it tells us that it, when we run build, it will replace this path. I'll say which should be replaced automatically with environment.prod and running ng build. So we'll have to test this. So we should be able to leave the path. We shouldn't have to change the code here, but we'll see. So now we'll go to a terminal in our Angular application. Go back to your terminal. Your app's probably still running. So create a new terminal window. And now we run a run the command. Now, Chris, this won't work for you, so don't panic. I am recording it. So we're going to run ng build. So this is going to compile our Angular app for distribution. It's going to shrink it from like 300 megabytes down to about 300 kilobytes. Um, Oh, you know, hang on just a second. I may have made a mistake in my environment file. Ah, 
the value should be called server URL. I called it API server. It should be API, it should be server URL in both. Sorry about that. I'll just run that command again. I'll run ng build. So in my environment.prod, we've added the server URL with our live Heroku domain. And now we get a new folder Okay, let's see where it is. We now have a dist folder. So this is our distribution. This is our bundle. So it's right in the root. There's now a dist folder. For, so this is for distribution. So I'm going to go, go to my client project in my file explorer. And I'm going to go into the dist folder, and now I've got a folder called jobs client. So this has all of our code. So it's bundled and compressed. This JavaScript file, all our TypeScript, all the work we've done in Angular with our component and service. All the code gets added to this one single messy JavaScript file. And somewhere in here, if I look, it will include the server URL. If I search for Heroku, it's here. So here's the server URL with the calls to get, delete, add. So all of this, everything we did in our service and the component, it gets added to this one JavaScript file. So I'm going to go into the disk jobs client. I'm going to highlight everything and copy all of those distribution files. Okay, so copy everything in the dist jobs client. And now I'm going to go to my job server. I'm going to make a new folder called public. And then I'm going to paste that Angular distribution in here. So all of those seven files, so there's three JavaScript files, a favorite icon, our index.html, a licenses file, and our style sheet. So this is now inside of my node application in the public folder. So we need to add a few lines of code to our server application. So when the server application runs, it will route all requests to the index page. And then the index page, all the any backend requests we make to the backend URL, they all happen within a single app so we can deploy all this. So inside my job server, I made a public folder and I pasted in those Angular distribution files. And now I can see here's my public folder. So now we just want to configure the node app that it runs. It will load any requests. It'll go to our single page. So I'm going to go to app.js. And before we start our server, before we start listening, we now want to route all HTTP requests to our single page index.html from the Angular bundle. We copied in. So we're setting up a static path here. So all requests get routed to the public folder.
and then we call app.get star. So any requests we call res.send file. So this is going to load our HTML page. Our directory name. So we can try this locally, but then we want to deploy it through GitHub and up to Heroku as well. So I'll check my terminal. So I've just added lines 34 and 35 with the Angular bundled files inside of the new public folder. I'm just going to make sure my Nodemon is still running. So first we'll try this out locally. So if I go to localhost 3000 now, okay, that's okay. <laughs> this is to be expected. We don't get any data yet because we haven't deployed this to our new domain. So this results to be expected, but it loads the index.html page. So now what we need to do is I need to Oh, let me think. Hang on. I guess we didn't need to create a new domain. Did we? <laughs> we could just use our original uh, Oh no, we do need a new New repo. Never mind. Sorry. We're all, that's okay. All right. So now I'm going to push this stuff up to GitHub. So I'm going to push my server to my server repo and then connect my Heroku site to it. So I will add my files again. So this is lesson 12.2. Add Angular bundle. And I'll push. So now in GitHub, I've updated I've updated my server repository, so all the angular files are here. Got my public folder. And I can see in app.js all the routes, all requests will get routed to my index page. So now I will link, connect up this repository and add my database connection back in. So in my full stack, I'm going to connect it. Get my repository name here. So I'm going to connect to my jobs, my server application, and connect. I'll enable my automatic deployment. And then I, it's a new, totally separate site in Heroku, so I also need to add my database connection back in. So my site can deploy, but it isn't going to work yet because we're missing the database connection. So it's going to fail, right? I get an error because when our site loads, it's trying to connect to the database. So the last step here to fix this is go into settings and my config vars. And I need to add the database URL from our server environment. This should be the final step, I would hope. We'll see. So go back to our server. I'm going 
going to copy my connection string as the database underscore URL. Ah, I need to set the node environment as production, I believe, as well. We'll add that. Um, Okay, we may need the client URL as well. I'm not sure that we do because now our requests are from the same domain, but I'll just go and check my log, see what's going on. App crashed. Uh, we're almost there. I just have to figure out what's going on. Why are we crashed? I can add the client URL. I wouldn't think I would have to, but maybe it needs it. The client URL here will be just our Heroku domain. wouldn't think that would be necessary, but... We'll just check the API that it's working, but it should be. Hmm, so not even that's working. Just pause for a moment. 